Some people could be given an entire field of roses, but they'll only see the thorns. The others will be given just a weed and they'll still notice the wildflower in it. Very good morning to all present here. I, Shankar of Class 12F, shall be the host of today's assembly. And the theme of our assembly is Perception, the Life Changer. So let's fill ourselves with a lot of hope and positivity and begin our day by worshipping the Almighty. I would request all of you to please join your hands, close your eyes and repeat. Saraswati Namastobhyam Varde Kamarupedi Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatume Sada Now I would like to call Asta for the English. Please join your hands, close your eyes and please do not repeat. Oh God our Father, we thank you for all your loving care and for giving us so many good things to enjoy. Send us on our way now to do our duty today. Grant that we may always stand firm on the side of right and spread happiness where we go. Thanks be to God. Now, I would like to narrate a story entitled The Potatoes, the Eggs and the Coffee. Once a daughter complained to her father, Oh father, my life is full of miseries. It's full of troubles and problems. And I'm tired of struggling with them all the time. Listening to this, her father took her to the kitchen and took out three pots. In first pot, he put some potatoes to boil. In the second, he put some eggs to boil. And in the third one, he put some coffee to brew. Seeing this, the daughter was of course puzzled. And she said, Father, I'm telling you about the difficulties in my life and you're teaching me how to cook. However, her father just asked her to wait patiently. After some time, he took out the potatoes, the eggs and the coffee and asked his daughter to look closely what she observes. When she looked at the potatoes, she said that they had become soft. And when she shelled her neck, she realized that they were hard boiled from inside. And when she took a sip of the coffee, she exclaimed with a grin on her face that it was definitely very refreshing and delicious. Hearing this, her father could not help but smile and said that there is a lesson to be learned from this, my dear daughter. The potatoes, the eggs and the coffee, all three went through the same situation, the boiling water. Yet, all the three reacted so differently. The potatoes that were hard initially became soft and breakable. The eggs that were liquidy from inside became harder on boiling and the coffee. It released its aroma into the bland boiling water and turned it into something so delicious and refreshing. Similarly, when we face difficulties, it's upon us how we perceive the situation and what our perception is towards a particular challenge. What truly matters is what changes within us. If we decide to change our perception, and if we decide to work accordingly to the situation, we'll realize that we are making our way through something really positive. Life is a fight and it will throw at us various challenges and obstacles in the, forms of, in the form of various jabs and punches. However, if we realize that the situation is under our control and we can control it, then we'll definitely stay in our rings and we we'll learn how to fight the situation with a smile on our faces. If we decide to learn and adapt to the change, and if we decide to make the right choices, then we will be standing at the end of each round in our rings, stronger enough to face any other obstacle that comes our way. Perception is the only weapon that we have to change our situation into something positive. So it depends upon us whether we want to wake up every day with a thought in our mind that I can do it and I can face this challenge, or we want to lose the fight without even fighting it by thinking, that it's too difficult for me and I can't do it. Thank you. Now I'd like to call Abhinav to share with us the thought of the day. Good morning, everyone. You know, whenever we enter a dark room, for the first few moments, our vision is black completely. Then after some time, our eyes and the brain start adjusting to the darkness. And then our vision becomes clearer. And then we are able to see the light coming from different corners of the room. You see, the light is always there, but we just aren't able to see it until we are familiar with the darkness. Similarly in life, whenever dark times arrive, we must face them head on and grow through them and continue looking for the light so that when we find it, we are a better version of ourselves and we are able to appreciate the light more. But don't let the light blind you as it happens every so often because the darkness always lies right under our gazes. So the thought of the day is light and dark live on one another. We must understand one to appreciate the other. Thank you. Now I would like to call Meta for the forgiveness prayer. Good morning, everyone. Please get ready for the English prayer. Lord, please help me remember the power of forgiveness 
and help me to extend this to others. I know what it means to forgive, and I know all the things you have forgiven me for. But it makes it difficult for me to forgive, and at times forget. Please help me move past all the pains and sorrows and fill my heart with forgiveness to help us all and give us strength and move us to a stronger place. I pray the amen. Now I would like to request everyone to observe a minute silence for the well-being of this planet. Thank you, everyone. Now, I would like to invite Pooja ma'am to share with us a few words. It was an intent to take this topic up perception because it's completely our perception that changes the way we attract energy and the way life treats us. It's not life treating us, but vice versa. How we react to situations. So your perception will always be different from someone else's. And how you perceive things depends how your life experiences have influenced your personality. We learn to value light because there is darkness. We know when we are happy because at some point of time in our lives, we have experienced sadness. Life will always have its highs and lows. It will never be a linear path. Your life choices will define whether you remain happy or not in odd circumstances. Life will continue. Every challenge that it throws at you only you decide how you perceive. Your perception of the world and those living in it, the circumstances that appear in your life, everything matters. And everything that is happening around you is open to multiple interpretations. It's not what happens or who appears in your life, but how you interpret and consciously or subconsciously act or react to it. That is the result of your personal perceptions. We've all heard the famous story of your glass being half empty or half full. So it depends on us whether we see the world as a wonderful place that's offering endless and fascinating adventures and opportunities, or we view life as dangerous and deceitful and something that's out there to get to all of us. It's simply your perception. And something that I have observed is that perception is mostly pattern-based. You know, you, if you're put in a loop in the same situation every time, there is a chance that without realizing you're going to react in, a, in the same manner, in a similar manner to every situation, to that same situation. So it's primarily a reason why some people handle emotions, some people handle grief better than others. It's simply their indication of being able to face challenges better in life. So try filling your center with happiness, with hope, change your perception and find a more grounding base for yourself to find happiness, to find a more centered approach to life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring words. Now I would like to invite Promini ma'am to share her thoughts. Good morning, everyone, once again. So it's a very nice, very beautiful topic, very well thought out topic, uh, class 12F. We talk of faith. Now, faith is a matter of perception. In the present times, that is what is keeping us in good stead and keeping our hopes alive. Many of you must be knowing this, but still I would like to read out something to you. It's a very interesting conversation between a professor and a student. So this is a professor of philosophy and he speaks to his class on the problem science has with God, who we call the Almighty. So he asks one of his new students, do you believe in God? So he says, absolutely, sir. So professor says, is God good? Student, sure. Is he all powerful? Student says, yes. Now the professor says, my brother died of cancer, even though he prayed to God to heal him. Most of us would attempt to help others who are ill, but God didn't. So how is this God good then? That's right. Tell me, is there evil in the world? So student says, yes. Now, if evil is everywhere and God did make everything correct, then how does 
evil exist who created evil student does not answer so professor says is there sickness immortality hatred ugliness all these terrible things exist in the world don't they student says yes sir so who created them your god now again professor says that science says you have five senses you use to identify and observe the world have you ever seen god so how do you perceive that so student says no sir i have not seen god have you ever heard him no have you felt him tasted him smelt him nothing no answer now the conversation goes on so professor says according to empirical testable demonstrated protocols science says your god doesn't exist what do you have to say so student says it is a matter of my faith so professor says yes faith that is the problem science has with this is there such a thing as heat professor says yes now the student is asking questions so the student says and is there such a thing as cold yes obviously that's the professor's reply so the student says no sir there is no such thing as cold you can have lots of heat more heat super heat mega heat white heat a little heat or no heat but we do not have anything called cold since you are all uh, all of you have studied this much science and you can understand children there is nothing called cold so he says we can hit 458 degrees below zero which is no heat but we can't go any further after that so there is no such thing as cold it is only a word we use to describe the absence of heat we cannot measure cold so heat is energy cold is not the opposite of heat it is just the absence of it so the class is absolutely silent not knowing where the conversation will end now the student says what about darkness professor is there such a thing as darkness professor yes what is night if there isn't darkness so again the student says you are wrong again darkness is the absence of something you can have low light normal light bright light flashing light but if you have no light constantly you have nothing and it's called darkness isn't it in reality darkness isn't if it were you would be able to make darkness darker but we never say darkness is becoming darker do we ever say that so now the professor says what is the point you are making the student says you are working on the premise of duality you argue there is life and then there is death a good god and a bad god you are viewing the concept of god as something finite something we can measure science can't even explain a thought it uses electricity and magnetism but has never seen them much less fully understood either one of them to view death as the opposite of life is to be ignorant of the fact that death cannot exist as a substantive thing death is not the opposite of life it is the absence of it so now tell me professor do you teach your students that they evolved from a monkey again professor feels he's at the receiving end so he says if you are referring to the natural evolutionary process yes of course i do so have you ever observed evolution with your own eyes sir that's what the students ask so the professor shakes his head with a smile and understands where the student is trying to take him so the student says since no one has ever observed the process of evolution at work and cannot even prove that this process is an ongoing endeavor are you not teaching your opinion sir are you not a scientist but a preacher and is there anyone in the class who has ever seen the professor's brain so the class is absolutely silent dazed scared to a certain extent now has anyone felt or touched or smelt the professor's brain no one appears to have done so so according to the established rules of empirical stable demonstrative protocols science says that you have no brain with all due respect sir how do we then trust your lectures so, professor i guess you'll have to take them on faith son student says that's it sir the link between man and god is faith 
and that is all that keeps things moving and alive and that is a matter of perception this is my perception so you see where perception can take you i just have to say that please live with this faith in your mind in your heart there will be challenges but you are capable of overcoming all of them if your perception is positive it takes you to an a positive analysis and solutions will always be positive you will be instrumental in bringing about that evolutionary process in yourself which will result in your ascent thank you so much and thank you once again for choosing that topic i want to tell you something that will bring cheer to all of us we have a student uh, gaurav shrivastav now again he did not take a back seat thinking classes will not go on uh, my teachers are not there he went on and on uh, this was reminded to me by abhinav because he spoke of research so when the school was closed this child was working on a research paper and he's completed that and he has sent it for review to the i triple e conference and the topic of the research paper was an efficient approach to hand gesture recognition computer vision so i will uh, pass on this paper to all of you to your teachers they will share it with you children please do go through it and you just understand at such a young age what deep thought process what kind of analysis and what kind of application of science is happening within the child and it's not coming from the teachers so you understand knowledge is within but you have to perceive it you have to understand the fact that you can unfold yourself and go to the highest realms of excellence i told you about a conversation any one of you can tell me who the student was abdul kalam a present thank you thank you ma'am for your motivational words now i would like to conclude this assembly by calling astha for the last shloka Please join your hands, close your eyes, and please do not forget. Om Trayamba Kam Yajamahe Sukandham Pushti Vardhanam Urvari Kam Yavandana Mrityar Mokshi Amamrita Om Shanti 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 Hi.